are about to see something you normally don't see, something that will shock you. You will be re-entering a world long gone, a period where teens went to the schoolyard to play sports and talked face to face, a less stressed time. Those days are slowly fading. Now, stress and competition among students is everywhere. Few go outside after school to take a break. Grades and test scores are always compared. Life is too short for this. Video games and Facebook have replaced going outside. What's that noise? I thought you had homework to do. Sorry. Do you guys feel like there's a lot of competition with your friends in high school? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's competition. Um, I don't know, I, since I'm in honors classes, I, I just like talk to my friends and kind of talk about tests. The um, problem is like, there's not much else to talk about yeah. in high school. Yeah, there's... I'm really competitive. Um, I mean, it's not like like when they like, I'll get like 100 and they'll get a 99 and be like, oh, like in your face, like I got higher than you. I mean, it's just like, I just strive so much, like I try so hard to like, you know, be like on top because like that's what my parents expected me and that's what I expect of, expect of myself, you know, so. It's a very stress-built, grade-oriented situation and everybody sits around comparing grades and comparing what they're going to do during the summer to boost their applications and what they're going to do to study for the SATs and what scores they already got and what they want to do to improve them. And for me, it was too much, and it just, I would internalize that information, and it just build my stress up more and more. So eventually I realized, I just, I'm going to stop. I share my grades because for me, it's not a big deal if I did well. I did well. If I didn't, then I didn't. It's my own fault. I can't blame anyone. We're kind of competitive. For me, when I was talking to my guidance counselor, when the subject of AP English came up, I honestly do not like English, and I would not like to take any part of it in my future. But I realized that nearly everyone I know takes AP English, so it's like, like if you don't take AP English, you're the odd one out. More competitive than it used to be, and people are a lot more concerned about their future than I think in the past when it was whatever kind of happens happens. At least that's the way it was when I grew up. So, from what a kid has to do now, it's the variables are incredibly hard, and in art, many many of our students use art as just a release. I feel that um, it's because of other people that you try to take on all these AP classes and all those other classes. Like normally, um, I think if you didn't talk about grades, which is probably impossible, I think all you would do is, you know, just, you know, do your own thing. But I think the competition makes people like, you know, go crazy with classes and all these other extracurricular activities. I think there's stress in high school because, uh, like, there's a lot of competition, but, like, the competition's geared, like, the kids towards each other. Well, like, last year was my junior year so it was most stressful for me and I actually broke out in hives like during mid mid uh, terms like I was like worried about SATs midterms all that stuff and then that's only like like a part of my life so like it's it's also like friends girls like pretty much it's like you know a combination of, of like all those things and like I really think like more than ever college admissions has become like such a crapshoot. Like it's like you're standing in the dark and shooting an arrow. Like I really think um, it's a numbers game. It's a, like a little bit of a lottery. They're looking for a violinist and if you're that like lucky violinist that they pick on that day. I totally agree. Yeah. You got plenty of like, violinists to choose from. On, on it's paper. It's like a bassoon guy who has a lucky. It's true. <laughs> on paper, like I was like winner, winner, chicken dinner for college. Like I had the A's, I had the twenty three hundred SAT, I had all the activities, um, and I like literally got weightless, 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 weightless. Like, I think that stress comes a lot from the uh, trying to get into college, and then parents trying to stress it to get into college and saying that they always, they're always on your back, trying to make sure you're doing everything perfectly. Well, I have four older siblings, and they went to. Um, Princeton and three of them went to Cornell, so that definitely put a lot of stress on me because like that's you're the fifth one and you better not, you know, there's a lot of pressure to do, succeed in school. My mom's from Guatemala, my dad's from El Salvador, and so they have very different views about what's going on here in the United States. The biggest challenge I ever had with them, and it was best, like the worst thing I had to go through, is that last year I had a boyfriend and they were being like really like 
negative towards it. Well, I can handle my work and him and my life. I just don't want to be all my life about all school. So it's just like really stressful. I had, I definitely had a hard time in high school, um, like just being happy while managing all that schoolwork, like just like the mental health bit. It's like you just have no time for yourself um, and you don't have enough time for your friends. And the kids don't have the downtime and that our expectations. Now, expectations, high expectations are great. I mean, I do it all the time. That's why I teach. I had a lot of stress in high school. Well, I don't have any AP classes, but I'm still full of stress, overwhelmed with everything that I do. I actually stay in school more than I'm at home. I take so many clubs and activities, I guess, not to go home in a way. There's got to be some place at school where they can just sort of chill out a little bit. I was accepted to a college that I really wanted to go to and was told that I could go by my parents. And then moments later, it was, no, you can't go because it's, it's too much. No, I don't feel like there's as much social pressure as much as there is like academic pressure. But then again, like I'm a nerd. Like I guess if you've like called a cheerleader in here, there might be a different like interpretation. I think there's stress in high school because on top of the workload that your classes give you, um, in like times like these when the economy sucks, Kids are so worried about like getting into college and which colleges their parents are going to be able to afford, and it's just so, and like they're just constantly thinking about it. Everyone coming together, you know, it puts stress on each other because when you talk to other kids and they have different opinions than yourself and they, you know, think different things are important, it definitely puts stress on you. You know, you want to fit in, you want to, you want to be part of the group. Just stay involved. Stay involved then. Just focus my time on what I have to do so I won't have to tolerate with them being immature with me and my brothers. Yeah. It's just a lot of pressure trying to be the greatest student you are, but you also have to come home to a family and try to play a role that you might not really know how to play. We see many high school students who have variable degrees of stress, uh, which is probably compounded by them not getting sufficient amounts of sleep. It would, I guess, be the unusual high school student who's getting as much as eight hours. I'd say junior year, probably six hours was my average, maybe a little less when it got further towards AP exams. Sleep is big for me. Um, I can't function without sleep. Like some kids, I don't know how they do it. They just go on and on and on and on and on and personally I can't do that. I usually get at least eight hours of sleep or else I'm just terrible. But there was a point where I just couldn't get that much because of all the things I had to do and I actually have like five hour energy bottles in my house and they made me a little crazy. Um, well for me it was more so time management and the fact that I had a sport as well and with hours of sleep I mean, I went from practice at night to practice in the morning, so I would get five or six hours of sleep, tops. <laughs> and on average, I would say, on a good night, I get six hours of sleep. They start the days really, really early, and I feel like that extra sleep in the morning, even if it's only an hour, um, I think it's really necessary. Like, me having to get up at like 5.45 versus like 7 o'clock really kind of like kills my day, and I get up and I'm, I just, don't want to like go to school because it's so early and it just makes me want to hate it more. Um, I'm actually very particular about my sleep. I don't believe that I should be doing homework past like 11. So I always go to sleep at 12 and then I wake up at 7.30 because I first hurried off. But I like, I won't do homework if it's going to get in the way of my sleep. <laughs> I always made sleep one of my top priorities because I can't function if I don't get sleep. So I generally get it between 8 to 10, which is a good night's rest. So part of it is the overly scheduled notion of kids' lives and the idea that there's stress involved with everything. I think one of the biggest things is having good time management. Um, people think they're on top of their work and they think they're on top of their stuff and really they're just sort of going from thing to thing to thing without planning it out and being thoughtful with what they're doing. Instead, if you choose something that like you really, really like, you know, one word that all the schools throw around is passion, right? So, you know, you find your passion and you spend a considerable amount of time doing that and like, you know, doing a lot of great things within that field. And then on top of that, you know, you can do other things too, but I, I wouldn't um, have the mentality, like obviously you want to be well-rounded, but I wouldn't have the mentality that you should try to, you know, do everything, cover as many bases as possible. Because I think that uh, one is slightly unrealistic for some people, and two, it doesn't, 
you know, really show a particular level of dedication towards any, you know, particular thing. Because I think what the schools want to do is kind of like find what that passion is and, you know, show how you'll really be able to take advantage of like a particular department or program that their school has to offer. I mean, it helps to just have someone to talk to and have someone who knows that you're going to be okay and have a good friend group. Relax. Have fun. Well, I would definitely recommend meditation. You know, close your eyes, find a quiet place, relax, you know, think about something you like, think about a place where you want to be. It can be an imagination, anything. Or I could recommend them to drink tea. Like, it works. <laughs> I go jogging, you know, um, I think almost every day a week um, as much as I can to relieve my stress. Um, and it's really helpful during the school year and I still even go during the summer. Do you have time to do that, though? Um, I make time for it, even if it means staying up an extra, like, 30 minutes at night, I, I do it. I mean, my stress reliever is probably, I mean, I've been taking a lot of naps lately. That's what I do. That's exactly cool. what I do. I think sleep is the prime stress reliever. <laughs> But apart from that, I would say playing video games, that's, that one works well. Uh, <laughs> playing, like, just having a recreational sports game with friends, I think that works too. Yeah, even just going outside for yeah. like a minute. <laughs> yeah, that, that's very helpful as far as relieving stress goes. Um, in high school, for me, one of the big things is like planning things to look forward to. I definitely think, I don't, I don't know if this is possible but like I think it'd be better if teachers could coordinate more instead of like giving everyone like a test on one night because that always seems how it that always seems to happen how you always have like five tests it on always night. happens so like I don't if like teachers could coordinate better I, I think that would help students out a lot more this is probably the typical answer but less homework <laughs> I mean you spend six hours in school so you don't want to spend another 12 hours on homework and the more homework the kids have the less they do so I have to give more. Schools really don't care if kids tend to overload themselves. And if a guidance counselor sees that someone's doing a sport and a club and six APs at the same time, that should really be a red flag that's going off. Like really, the guidance counselor should be making the kid understand, do you know what you're getting into? And if you're in trouble, here are resources to help you. Uh, just don't well, like let your whole life pass you by worrying about the future because that'll make you crazy. And you just gotta be in the now. Uh, yeah, we're all going through this. We can all sort of help each other come out of this. And I usually say to myself that, you know, you like physiologically, I have everything. Like I have my parents, a shelter and food and everything. I just need to like, you know, I, I get nervous so much that I need to learn to stop pushing myself, you know? Well, like I said, I think kids just create the competition amongst themselves. And we put pressures on ourselves that we can't ever possibly attain. So I really think that's where it all comes from. And we just have to realize that, I mean, I never thought I'd be going to Syracuse. I thought I'd be going to an Ivy League school. And I just feel like everything's gonna work out. I had a friend who after high school came up to me and said, you know, Andrea, I loved it. Every time I came up to you, you just said, how are you? You didn't ask what I got on the test. You didn't ask, you know, did you get your homework done? You just said, how are you? I mean, personally, whenever I'm stressed, I fold all the clothes in my closet. I don't know why. Just every, like, every morning, my mom see like, on random nights, my mom will see my closet completely organized. So I guess it's just something to take my mind off it. I play basketball, and I listen to music and talk to my friends, really. I participate in yoga, and occasionally I cry, but I don't, I guess that's a stress reliever. And when you feel your family in school, it really takes away some of the stress because you feel like you're at home. Just do what you have to do basically. Like if you want to do something, just focus and you can do it. If they say you can't do it and you're not good enough, prove them wrong. Just prove them wrong.